Section 7.5, Linear Transformations in Three Dimensions. Uh, so this time we've got to have a square three by three matrix and that will um, be um, representing our transformations that we're going to be investigating. So um, in if you've got this matrix, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, this matrix will map your vectors unit vectors in x direction so one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one to the e vectors that you put with a position vector of a d g b e h c f so you're talking about each column represents the image of your unit vectors in the crucial, important three dimensions. Um, now we need to talk about uh, reflections in X, Y and Z axis. Before we do that, I've kind of prepared something, a little thing here. So um, in terms of how to draw a set of three axes in... Um, three dimensions let me just start it again so it's a little bit bigger so the way how i remember it now the each book you go to has different um way of presenting because there's limited but there is several different ways of representing uh the the axes in three dimensions most of the time you will have um, a set of axes like this now in the book they put this one backwards into the into the page if you like. So let me just show you how I remember which way round to put my um, axes. I simply, to begin with, I look at this as my x and y axis, and that must be my z. Now if I most of the time though they have a z axis pointing up so that's not a problem all we're going to do is doing exactly the same so if I want my z axis to be pointing upwards the z notice it goes x y z so I must have x y z you go in alphabetical order it has to be anti-clockwise x y z okay so you can you can also imagine this one here this is your two axes that were red if you were to turn them around you'll be getting this okay so if you turn them around so z points up y will go that way x will go out if you want to not that you would but if it was necessary to imagine that your uh, x was pointing upwards exactly the same Put what you want you to uh, to be as x, and it has to be x, y, z in that order, anti-clockwise. So x, y, z. Again, you can just imagine rotating the original one if you prefer. Like I said, some people you'll find it easy. You would have to rotate this one again, ninety degrees. So your well, y will go where z is, z will go where x is, and x will go where um, y was now in the book which was very confusing to me because i never really seen anything um, being done like this uh, they do their axes like this now it's i'm talking about also in the exams normally those this z or x is pointing this way uh, let me just do the labeling they do it like this there you go so um, they have uh, this, this, so they've got Z pointing upwards. There you go. Okay, so the, similar to this one. So what we need to do is still this anti-clockwise alphabetical order needs to be obeyed. So it has to be X, Y, Z. Okay, and if you wanted to change it, as long as those where the arrows are, you go in anti-clockwise X, Y, Z. If you wanted this one to be X, you put X, Y, Z. It's very, very simple. Okay, so let's see if you can um, uh, 
work out the matrices that correspond to reflections in the planes. So uh, there, there are different planes. Let's start with mx equals zero. Let me actually draw, I draw it on this one here. So x equals zero. So you want to think about the collection of all points in the space where x coordinates fixed at zero. So you're talking about when you start from the origin, you're not going to go along the x-axis at all. You're going to stay there. You, are, you will be able to go along the y-axis, along the z-axis. So effectively, you are talking about the plane that contains z and y. Okay, so it's that plane, flat plane. So if you are reflecting in the, this plane, let's start with the first vector. So the image of one, zero, zero, when will it go? I need to find the first column. So one, zero, zero is over here. If you reflect it in this plane that goes through the X and Y, uh, the Z and uh, Y axis, it will flip over there into minus one, zero, zero. Okay, now the, the unit vector along the y axis, which is zero, one, zero, and the unit vector along the z axis, which is zero, zero, one. Well, you know, I'm reflecting it in the plane that contains those points, so they will stay where they are. So it's zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one. Okay, so you need to be able, if they ask you what is the matrix representing reflection in the x equals zero plane, you should be able to write it down. Okay, how you remember it is up to you. You might just memorize it. So very similar thing going on here. We are going to find the reflection matrix corresponding to reflection in the y equals zero plane. So there's the y axis. I want to have, um, imagine all the points, so where is that plane? All the points where y is equal to zero, so you're not going to go along that axis. So we're talking about being able to along the, go along x and z axis. So this is the plane. There you go. So let's consider the images of our unit vectors. So where will our one, zero, zero go? So one, zero, zero is over here. Well, this one will stay at one zero zero because you reflect it in the plane that contains that point. Okay, the y uh, unit vector zero one zero. Well, it's going to get reflected onto the other side. Okay, so it's going to go into zero minus one zero. And then finally, the z unit vector zero zero one will stay in the purple plane y equals zero. So this is the reflection in y equals zero. This was reflection in x equals zero. Now you can spot the pattern. I think the last one will definitely be, uh, minus one will be on the last column. So one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, minus one. Let's just quickly check. Z equals zero, okay? So I don't want to be going along this line. So there is my plane that I'm going to be reflecting in. There you go. So that plane contains the X and Y axes. So I'm going to consider the unit vector one, zero, zero. Well, if I reflect it in this one, it's not going to go up or down, it stays there. So that's why this one stays. Now, zero, one, zero, again, that will stay where it is. And finally, zero, zero, one, this one will be reflected onto the zero, zero, minus one. So this is reflection in Z equals zero plane. Great. So let's have a look at example 12. So in this, this example, we have got a transformation uh, U in three dimensions, and this transformation represents uh, the reflection in the Z equals 
zero play so reflection i've just done this once so i'm not going to go through this but you either memorize it or you draw the set of axes correctly and then um, write down this is going to be like one of maximum two marks for that kind of question okay so that's part a part b find the image of the points with their coordinates minus one two three so when will this point be mapped to i'm just trying to imagine where's minus one minus one two along the y-axis and three so point somewhere here so if i reflect it in this blue plane it's going to go somewhere here now which coordinate some coordinates will be the same i'm guessing x and y and only z will change to the opposite let's see if i'm right you don't need to be thinking like this you just need to know that to find the image of this point you've got to mu multiply the position vector of that point by the matrix so the image is going to be minus one so it's selected then you've got um, minus one and zero one times two yeah and then last one is minus one times zero two times zero and minus three there you go so the image is minus one two and three so it's minus one two and down minus three good minus three here i wrote minus three so as well as reflections you need to be able to state the matrices for the rotation in three dimensions the rotations will only be uh, considered around the x y and z axis so um, let's generate a general a matrix for the rotation around the x axis so here is um, the uh, three axes um perpendicular axes x y and z in this road imagine rotating in anti-clockwise direction so it's through theta around the x-axis and um what is the matrix that is associated with this transformation so what we need to do is do the same thing we've done in two dimensions. We are going to consider what happens to the three unit vectors. So first of all, uh, let's see what uh, the unit vector 1, 0, 0, so along positive x-axis, When where is it going to go when you start rotating, spinning around the x-axis? So you can imagine holding this, uh, this those three lines they are connected rigidly, and if you try and spin it around the x-axis, the x-axis will stay where it is. You just know that point will stay in its place. So the first column of our matrix is going to be 1, 0, 0, because that is going to be mapped onto itself. So then we need to consider what happens to this point. So what I've done here, uh, because all the spinning will be happening now, the only points that will change uh the position their position are the ones that are in the x in the y z plane there you go so in this plane which i've copied over here so you've actually recognized that uh, this diagram we've done it in the two dimensional uh, rotations so very quickly you could see that you could probably do it this is a closing angle so this is cos theta because it's this length here is one because we are turning that spinning that unit vector and this is sine theta but in our diagram the cos theta represents the y coordinate so it's this point is going to go to the y coordinate of cos theta and the this coordinate is going to be worth sine theta and this is z and what happens to the x coordinates well x coordinates they we are not stepping outside this plane green plane so we're not going to come along the x-axis so we're going to stay at x equals zero so it's going to be zero 
So this one is mapped to that uh, column. So I can copy that down. This is one, zero cos theta sine theta. Okay, and similarly, let's look at what happens to this point. It's going to be spun to this point. Again, this is going to be cos theta here, and this is sine theta. But in terms of coordinates here, this here is cos theta, but this is, sorry, the other way around, keep my, this is sine theta. Yeah, it's opposite, and that's the closing, cos theta, okay? Let me just redraw it here so it's clear. I've done it before, but just to make sure that you understand. If this is one and this is theta, then this here is adjacent, so that gets cos theta, and this here gets sine theta, there you go. That's if you take uh, this triangle out in terms of the grid, the coordinate here is minus sine theta, and this is plus cos theta all the way there. So, what would the point with the coordinate 0, 0, 1 be mapped to? So, the x coordinate, again, we're not stepping out of the x, uh, this z, y, z plane, so we're not going to, to move along the x axis, so it stays at 0. Uh, the y coordinate is going to be uh, over here, so it's minus sine theta. And the z-coordinate will go to cos theta. So that is our last column. So if you just look now at our matrix, you might be absolutely, you know, it might be easy to memorize the trick. Okay, so spinning it around the x-axis, you are blocking the x, wherever x's are here. Um, the first column in the first row and here this is just the matrix that corresponds to the two-dimensional rotation that we considered before and that is in the formula booklet so as long as you know it you can use it for this uh, particular rotation rotation around the y-axis okay so anticlockwise we're going to spin it around the y-axis so effectively what you are going to get is the movement within the plane that contains x and z axis. So all of that will be spinning. So there you go. Okay, so we need to find the images of the unit vectors in uh, 1, 0, 0. So unit vector along the x axis, along the y axis. That's easy along the y axis. We're not pop it, popping outside, that just stays the same, so that will be fixed. And along the z axis, so let me just write this straight away. The middle one is going to stay as it is. Okay, so imagine taking this red plane that I've just shaded in out and redrawing it so as if it existed in two dimensions. So if I do that, my x will have to face up. If I do the traditional way of drawing the axis, and Z will go across. So I need to find the images of those unit vectors. So this one here, there you go, it will go over here. And this here will go over here. So this one is easy, we'll keep on doing this one. Uh, this one is going to go to, remember, this uh, Y coordinate will be unchanged. So the z coordinate is going to be cos theta and the uh, x coordinate which is going upwards is this length here so it's sine theta and then clearly this one is going to be zero so this is sine theta this is cos theta now for this one this is cos theta and this is sine theta but in our new relabeling x coordinate is going to be uh, cos theta the y coordinate stays at zero and z coordinate goes to minus sine theta
okay so let's pop these down so this is the image of one zero zero so that is going to be my first vector cos theta first column zero minus sine theta and this is the sine theta zero cos theta okay so uh, i mean remembering that you need to fix the these um, the y at the same position is not difficult just need to make sure that you if you want to memorize memorize the uh, these uh, vectors in the correct order so let's just do the last one i think the y-axis is the hardest one to do uh, so around the z-axis so again let's just think about it there's my z x y okay so we're going to do the anti-clockwise rotation around the z so anything on the z will just stay there so what do we need to do we need to consider the movement of that plane which is our x and y plane so this is just easy that's your y that's your x there you go so this is just going to be the usual one that's theta so that will go from uh, one zero zero you're going to go to the point uh, where x will go to the x coordinate over here which is cos theta y is going to go to sine theta and z will stay at zero and this one here so from your zero one zero you're going to have x will go to minus sine theta y will go to cos theta and this is going to stay at zero so let's put these together so our matrix is going to be the x the image of one zero zero goes to cos theta sine theta and zero the image of zero one zero is going to be minus sine theta cos theta and zero and the image of one zero zero one if you go back to this display if you rotate it it just stays where it is there you go okay uh, so again this one here is exactly the same as the two-dimensional matrix of uh, uh, rotation so let's have a look. So these are exactly the same as this one, but you fixed the first column in the first row. Here, the last column, the last row. So it's just this one here that you need to memorize how to do it. Effectively, it's going to be, if you just ignore these two, if you delete these, you have cos minus sine sine cos. So you always have causes on the diagonal. They're always positive and signs on the diagonal but um, if you remember that it's opposite to what it is in the normal two-dimensional reflection for the y-axis maybe that's a way forward it's not too bad actually to remember okay so we will go on to example 13 and then that will lead us to exercise 7 f oh, sorry 7 e and then we've got uh, one more exercise so here we've got a um, matrix and you need to recognize what does this matrix show. And you can see that this is an example of the last uh, type of question. So it's going to be a uh, rotation. It's around y-axis and to recognize through what angle so it's going to be this one we're going to just always quote it cos theta it's not in the formula booklet so you need to remember what it is okay so find the value of cos theta so match this up with root 3 over 2 solve it 
So you're going to do cos inverse of root 3 over 2. So here the angle is equal to 30 or minus 30 degrees. Uh, sine theta, so let's match this entry with this entry that gives me a half. So theta is equal to a half or 180 minus 30, 180 minus 30, which is 150. So you're going to get 30 degrees as the common one. So theta is equal to 30 degrees. So around y-axis through 30 degrees, you don't need to say positive, that the angle tells you positive anticlockwise direction. Okay, so part B, find the image of the point with coordinates minus 1, minus 2, 1. So you just need to multiply those numbers by the matrix that's given. Okay, so carefully do that. Minus one, zero and a half. So it's going to be minus root three over two plus a half. Then you've got minus two. And then you've got a half plus root three over two. Uh, put those, the solution, uh, and let's just put it as coordinates of the point. I combine them into those into one fraction as well. Okay, so you are ready to move on to exercise 7e.